further ado, I will hand you over to Carlos Lacha. Carlos is our design consultant, and he will be leading the uh, series of six workshops. Over to you, Carlos. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, welcome to everybody today. Um, this is the first of six in the Belfast Met Design Workshop webinar series, an introduction to design thinking. And on your screen at the moment is contact for anyone that needs to get in touch for more details on how Belfast Met can support your business. So just email us at businessdevelopment at belfastmet.ac.uk or at e3 underscore belfastmet on Twitter. And so firstly, let me introduce myself. My name is Carlos Latson. And I've been involved with the many aspects of product development for over 20 years. I've been an engineer and a designer in the aerospace, the automotive, the medical, consumer product and heavy equipment industries. I've headed design teams for, for projects large and small. Um, as well as just being a card in that development process. I've managed projects from a few hundred pounds up to over a million pounds. And regardless of the size of the project, I find the process of problem solving very satisfying. And I get a great feeling when I see people benefiting from the products I help to create. I'm currently a design consultant with Belfast Med as well as running my own product development consultancy, Darkway Design, based here in Belfast. And uh, once again, I would like to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions during the webinar, please put them into the chat and I'll do my best to answer them at the end if I can. So without further ado, let's get into it. So, Let's start with this question. What is design? Well, basically, design is the process of creating a plan or a solution to a problem. And so, what does that involve? It would take some creativity, add some critical thinking, and combine them to develop a concept, product, or service that meets specific needs and solves specific problems. Creativity involves generating new and innovative ideas, approaches and perspectives. It's the ability to think outside the box and come up with unique and unconventional solutions. Creativity is important in design because it allows designers to identify new opportunities, explore conventional ideas and find new and innovative ways to meet the needs of their users. Critical thinking on the other hand, that, that's the process of logically and systematically evaluating information, arguments and evidence to make informed decisions. In the design process, Critical thinking is used to evaluate the feasibility and the effectiveness of creative ideas. It helps designers to assess the pros and cons of different solutions, identify trade-offs, and then go on to take the best course of action. So summarily, together, creativity and critical thinking they combine to generate and refine ideas, evaluate those solutions, and helps designers to make informed decisions. Combination of these two skills empowers effective 
and innovative solutions. The idea is to meet the needs of the users in a meaningful way. Design can be referenced within a wide range of disciplines, including architecture, this is where spatial arrangement, choice of materials, construction techniques, the design of lighting, they, they, they all come together to play a part. There's graphic, where the use of color, font types, image selections, all these, all these things are brought together to convey the right message. There's digital, where the products themselves need to be intuitive and user-friendly. There's service design, fashion, and industrial design. Sorry, we're having a slight technical difficulty. Okay. <clears throat> Process of design is often iterative, meaning there are multiple rounds of refinement and improvement. It's about designers working in a cyclical process to perfect their solution. Design is a critical critical aspect of innovation, and it's essential for creating new and exciting products, exciting services, and also exciting experiences that meet the needs and desires of users and customers. So, we'll ask, why is this a critical aspect of innovation? Besides helping organizations or individuals create new products or services or experiences, who is it for? It's for users and customers. Now, it has to be kept in mind that the customer and the user may not necessarily be one and the same. An example of this situation where this is highly prevalent that's, that's in the med medical industry. An example of a product where the user and customer are separate entities would be a hospital bed. The user in this case would be the patient who would be lying in the bed, whilst the customer would be the hospital or healthcare facility that is purchasing the bed. A designer has to consider the patient. The bed, it must be comfortable. It has to be safe and it needs to be convenient with features like adjustable heights, adjustable angles, and rails to prevent falls. The designer also has to consider the customer who would be the hospital or healthcare facility in this example. The bed, it must be durable, it needs to be easy to clean, and it has to be cost effective. So it needs to have sturdy features, it needs to have smooth services, and overall, a low maintenance design. Ultimately, the goal of design is to create something that is functional, aesthetically pleasing, and meaningful for the people who use it. So, okay, that brings us to design thinking. And why you need it? So, design thinking is used by design led companies. Design led companies use it to gain a competitive advantage because it provides a structured and user centered approach to problem solving. And this then leads to innovative and effective solutions. When you achieve innovative and effective solutions, the experience for your customers are positive, and the positive experience means they're likely to spend more and spend again. 
the customer will also go on to tell their friends. We've all experienced the WeChat. Where can I get product A, B, or C, or who does, you know, what service? You'd always recommend the one that gave you a positive experience. And again, why? Why? Because it's based around a user-centered approach. Designing thinking starts with a deep understanding of the user, their needs, the problems they're facing. This idea of a user-centered approach, yeah, well, it all comes together, it helps designers to create solutions that truly meet the needs of their users. And these solutions are more likely to be successful in the marketplace. Design thinking leads to innovation. It encourages designers, encourages engineers, and creators of all types to explore unconventional solutions and to think creatively. And this can lead to the development of innovative products, innovative services, and innovative experiences. These or what give companies a competitive edge. And probably, as you can see, the most reference example from the past 15 years is the Echo, which, as we all know, revolutionized the smartphone industry. This product gave Apple a significant advantage over its competitors. And it went on to help establish the company as a leader in the tech industry. Before the iPhone, before all this, iPads and all the i products that they have, before all this, Apple spent over 30 years making PCs with poor sales figures and no market share. Another possible benefit is fast return to market. By using a structured and iterative approach to problem solving, design thinking can help companies to move more quickly from idea to prototype and then on to their final product. This can give companies a significant advantage in fast moving industries where speed to market is critical. For example, fashion. Fashion industry is highly seasonal. And companies that are slow to bring new styles to market, well, they risk losing customers. They risk losing customers to more trend conscious competitors. There is increased collaboration. Design thinking emphasizes the collaboration between designers, the engineers, business professionals, and their users. This cross functional collaboration can help to identify and address problems more quickly. This then goes on and it leads to more effective and efficient solutions. If we take a look at the Toyota Prius, this is an example of an effective solution that this came about due to collaboration between designers, engineers, and business professionals at Toyota. The Prius, well, it was developed in response to the growing concerns about the environment and the growing need for more fuel efficient vehicles. So, what did Toyota do? do? Uh, they got their designers, their engineers, and all their business professionals within the company um, to work together 
to create a hybrid electric car. This hybrid electric car would be both environmentally friendly and also economically viable. The resulting Toyota Prius, this car was launched in 1997, which, as we know, was quite a number of years ago. It quickly became one of the best selling hybrid vehicles on the market. The Prius, that was a game changer in the automotive industry. Its success, well, it inspired other manufacturers to go on to develop their own hybrid and electric vehicles. And this example of um, game-changing design thinking collaboration within the automotive industry, well, if you look around you, it's being repeated as we speak today with Tesla's electric vehicles and highly effective charging infrastructure. So that brings us to continuous improvement. Design thinking is a continuous process of iteration and improvement. With data producers and stakeholders coming together to guide that process. This iterative approach helps companies to continuously improve their products, improve their services, and improve the customer experience. And all this provides a significant competitive advantage. Now, I've given you an example of a service company that has mastered continuous improvement to gain a major competitive advantage. And that company is Amazon. Amazon has focused on continuous improvement. It has a strong data-driven decision-making culture. And this encourages experimentation and innovation. Amazon has continuously improved its e-commerce platform, its delivery process, and its customer experience. And I'm very sure that most of you, if not all of you, have experienced the Amazon e-commerce platform. So what does that lead to? That leads to increased customer satisfaction and also a huge competitive advantage in the market. Amazon's use of data analytics allows it to optimize its supply chain and its delivery processes. It enables it to offer fast and reliable delivery to customers. Continuous improvement has also led to the development of new products and services, such as Amazon Prime and Amazon Web Services. And these products and services have further strengthened, strengthened Amazon's position as the leader in online retail industry. So, to review, design thinking provides a structured and user-centered approach to problem solving. And this then leads to innovative and effective solutions with increased collaboration. Design led companies can gain a competitive advantage by creating products and services with fast attempts to market. And with continuous improvement, 
They go on to provide experiences that truly meet the needs of their users and helps them stand out in the marketplace. Here we have a design value index chart showing that design-centric companies often outperform others. And that's because they place a strong emphasis on design as a critical aspect of their business strategy. This emphasis on design allows them to be both innovative and effective leading to several key benefits. Firstly, we have increased efficiency by using a structured and iterative approach to problem solving. These design-centric companies, they identify and address their problems quicker, and this leads to more efficient and effective solutions. Then there's strong brand identity. Design centric companies often have a strong brand identity that sets them apart from their competitors. This strong brand identity can help to attract and retain customers and can also increase the perceived value of the company's products and services. And then there is the improved customer experience. We've already touched on this. And by placing a strong emphasis on creating a positive and intuitive customer experience, this, this can lead to higher levels of customer satisfaction, repeat business and customer loyalty. And with this slide, we're here we have a few design-centric companies. They often outperform others because they place a strong emphasis on design as a critical aspect of their business strategy. This emphasis on design allows them to create innovative and effective solutions. These solutions that they create, they go on to, to improve customer satisfaction, increased efficiency within these companies, and a strong brand identity. And this all comes together to set them apart from their competitors. All too often, businesses see design as an expense and not as an investment. With increased innovation, as we touched on before, and the improved customer experience and the efficiency that design thinking bring, brings, businesses in the UK, for example, for Every one pound invested in design, they can expect over 20 pounds in increased revenue, over four pounds increased in net operating profit, and the return of over five pounds in increased exports. So, we've looked at the why, 
and we've looked at the benefits. Also, some of the well-known brands that use design thinking. Now, let's look at what it is. Design thinking is a human-centered approach. Human-centered approach that is focused on creating solutions that meets the needs of its users. Design thinking it encourages individuals and design teams to think creatively, to work collaboratively, and importantly, they must be open to feedback and iteration. In order to gain that, those iterative steps, design teams, they need to be involved in continuous experimentation in the pursuit of solving the unique problems and challenges that have been set. Design thinking, it, it, it's a scientific process that relies on great storytelling. Scientific, because it follows a structured, and systematic approach. This approach, it's informed by research, it's informed by experimentation, it's informed by gathering information and data about the problem that needs to be solved and the user. Then, Analyzing this information, design teams then go on to generate the possible solutions and telling a story. That's telling a story about the user's needs. It's telling the story about the problems being solved. This storytelling, it's all this can help to get others excited about your solution, about your product, about your idea, about your service. And it's also there to build buy-in for your project, for your design solution, for your idea. Now, all this can be especially important in getting stakeholders to support your project and also to invest in its development. First, let's back up for just a second to define design thinking. We said design thinking is a people-centered approach to finding solutions to complex problems. So what does that mean? Instead of just focusing on whether or not an idea is technically possible, or even if it's economically viable, design thinking starts by finding out what the user really wants and what they really need. Ask yourself. Will your product be desirable? Will the product meet the wants? Will it meet the needs and the desires of your target users? You should consider the emotional and psychological appeal of your product. It can be a crucial factor in determining the success of your product in the market. Your aim is to avoid design or functionality issues that make your product difficult or unappealing to use. Ask yourself, will the product be viable? When 
assessing the viability of a product, factors such as production costs, market demand, competition, and profitability all need to be considered. Your product needs to be economically and financially feasible and sustainable over the long term. It needs to go on to generate revenue and profits with a viable business model. Ask yourself, can your product actually be produced? So, when evaluating the technical feasibility of your product, factors such as the complexity of the design, the materials, the manufacturing processes required, the availability of skilled labour, and even the equipment required to make it. All of this needs to be considered. If your product requires the use of new, untested technology or processes, you have to be prepared for the fact that there is a possibility it could be considered technically infeasible. All that said, it's in the sweet spot where all of these factors overlap that true innovation is found. In short, design thinking is a problem solving approach that involves empathy, creativity, and iteration. It's a mindset that encourages individuals and teams to understand the needs of users and then to go on to generate a wide range of ideas and rapidly prototype and test their solutions. And this design thinking process is divided into five stages. Empathize, define, ideate, prototype, test. Let's look at these in turn briefly. Firstly, empathize. This is the first step of the design thinking process. And it is about understanding the needs and the problems of the users. It involves conducting research and observation to gain insights into the user's needs, their wants, and the user pain points. This can be done through methods such as interviews, surveys, and ethnographic studies. The goal of this phase is to understand the user's perspective. and create a deep understanding of the user's needs. Secondly, define. Once you have a deep understanding of the user needs, the next step is to clearly define the problem that needs to be solved. This involves identifying the key issues, challenges that the user is facing, and define the problem in a specific and measurable way. It's important to define the problem in a way that is actionable and importantly, solved through design. Thirdly, ideate. This step is about generating a wide range of ideas for potential solutions. It's an open-minded and non-judgmental phase where the goal, the goal is to come up with as many ideas as possible. You can use techniques like brainstorming, mind mapping, and affinity diagrams to generate your ideas. And the more ideas you generate, more opportunities you have to find a unique and innovative solution. Fourth step, prototype. Once you have a right wait, sorry, once you have a range of ideas, the next step is to create physical or digital representations of the ideas. 
Prototyping allows you to quickly and cheaply test the feasibility of potential of different ideas. It can be as simple as creating a sketch or a mock-up, or as complex as creating a working model. The goal is to create a visual representation of the idea that can be tested and refined. The fifth test. This is the final step of the design thinking process. And it's about getting feedback on the prototypes and iterating on the solutions. It involves testing the prototypes with users and gathering feedback on their usability, functionality, and overall effectiveness. This process can usually be de depicted as a linear one. But after testing, it's likely you return to any of the previous stages. Feedback from testing is then used to iterate on the solution and improve on it. The testing and iteration process is an ongoing cycle that continues until a satisfactory solution is found. Design thinking is a valuable approach to problem solving that's designed to encourage creativity, collaboration, and the all important iteration. It's a human centered approach that is focused on creating solutions that meet the needs of users. By going through the five stages of the design thinking process, you aim to empathize with the users and to define their problems. To generate a variety of ideas, prototype them and test your solutions. This process can be applied to any field and it's been used to create innovative products, innovative services and processes. In our second installment of our design workshop series, we will dive into the first step of the design thinking process, where we will introduce you to the tools which you can use to empathize with your customers or users. So, if you're new to design thinking, I hope you find this introduction insightful. If you've been involved in design thinking already, hopefully a little nugget of inspiration was found. So now let's do the Q and A. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. I hope, I hope, I hope you found that, that useful. useful. We have Hi there. Yes, apologies, everyone. We have opened up the uh, the floor for Q and A. So please do feel free to drop your questions in. Um, so we will start off with the first question from Mary Louise uh, over here. Mary Louise has asked, uh, "What books or references would you recommend for getting into getting more information on design thinking?" Carlos. Sorry, could you repeat that question again? Yeah, yeah sure. sure. What, what books, books or references, references would you, would you recommend, recommend for getting more information, information on design, design thinking? thinking? One book um, that I know is very good for design thinking is Build by Tony Fidel. Uh, 
It is a very absorbing read. Um, it goes into detail about design thinking. Um, it's a book that I know many people in the design sector have uh, bought and read and have used techniques within their daily design life. So yeah, Tony Fidel, Bill, if you're looking for a reading matter on design thinking. Fantastic, Fantastic. Thank, thank you, you Carlos. Carlos. We, we have, have a, a question, question from, from Sophie. Sophie. From, from Sophie. Sophie. Uh, Sophie, Sophie has asked, asked how, how would you recommend, recommend ensuring staking, staking, stakeholders, stakeholders are brought, brought into, the, into the into the design, design thinking, thinking process? process? I touched on that earlier, uh, and that was storytelling. When you want to get stakeholders on board, you need to tell a story about the problem that you're solving. You need to tell a story about the users, tell a story about their pain points, the issues that they're having, and the ways in which you're going to solve those problems. And um, so if you think back to Steve Jobs, whenever he gave a presentation, he would stand up on stage and he would tell a story. It started a trend because before Apple presentations, products were just launched with some advertising. Um, but now, a lot of large companies, big brands, whenever they launch a product, they will go on stage and they will tell a story. They'll tell a story about how that product was made, how it came about, and Prior to you, uh, the public, the customers and the users to get to see it, they've told the story to other stakeholders, to their teams, to get everybody involved and get them on board. So when you're going to solve a problem, always think about the story. The story is what gets, gets stakeholders on board. Right. Right. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much for that. that. We, we also, also have, have a question, question from, from Olivia Rose. Rose. Olivia asks, what's, what's the most, the most rewarding, rewarding part, part of the design, design process, process for you? <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's an interesting story. Um, the most rewarding part of the design process is not necessarily the design process. All of it is rewarding. All of it is rewarding, which is why I do it. I enjoy, I enjoy the initial part of brainstorming. I enjoy getting ideas done on paper. Um, I enjoy seeing other people's perspectives because um, regardless of how much you know about something or you think about something, somebody will always come with a different idea, a different perspective, something that you possibly haven't thought of before. Um, then designing, bringing these ideas together, solving the solution, working with your team, working with your stakeholders, um, going on to test them, um, the ups when something works, the downs when something doesn't work. Um, but ultimately it's it's when you see somebody using your product, when you see the problem that they've had, you know, and your solution has solved it. Um, yeah, you know, seeing seeing a happy user, seeing people enjoy your product, you know, seeing people benefit from all those months or even years of, of hard work. And that's that's what we do it for. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you very, very much, Carlos. Carlos. We, we will just close, just close off with these two quick questions. questions. Uh, uh, these, these questions, questions are more pertaining to follow-up 
actions, actions here, here Carlos. Carlos. So we, we first have Methel here. here. He's, He's a year eight, eight student, student and, and he would like to do a course in uh, user, user UX, UX user experience. experience. Methel, I, I will drop you a line with my contact details and you can reach out to me and we'll have a further discussion on that. We also have a question from Lorena. Uh, uh, is, it is it possible, possible to, to use design, design theory with your team, team when, when your, your own team, team is an end user? user? Uh, uh, Carlos, Carlos, is it, is possible, it possible to use design, design theory, theory with your it team? It certainly is. It certainly is. Um, all you have to do is put your team um, in the position of the end user. Um, there is nothing wrong with self-feedback. Um, so you can certainly use design thinking with your team. Um, I use it with my teams to improve my team's performance. Um, so I could ask about the team member, how they find a certain part of, say, a team building process or the brainstorming storming process. Um, because if you lead a team, once again, you come with your own ideas. Um, but by using the thinking on your team, it gives everybody a platform to put their ideas forward. And the whole idea is to benefit from the experience. So, yeah, to answer your question, yes, it is possible to use the design thinking with your own team. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank, thank you very, very much, Carlos, Carlos and, and thank, thank you, you to everyone that's on the call today for participating in the, in the first, first of our design, design thinking, thinking webinars. As we said, said uh, our, our next uh, uh, event will, will be next, next Thursday, Thursday at the same, same time. time. Hope, Hope to see you there. there. Thank, thank you very, you very much. much.